Relics of Rajivaharv is a solo player game by Joe Slack and it's published by Crazy Like a Box. And what you're basically doing in the game is you're progressing through campaigns and adventures. Each adventure is going to be its own unique puzzle and the adventures are going to get more complex as you move along. Much like games that are based on the phone app games which are moving a little character and throwing boxes around and trying to get up onto these boxes, in this game you're attempting to do the same thing. You are attempting to gather gems and in order to do so you need to push and pull and drop boxes down in certain spaces. There are different types of boxes that do different things based on how you move them and where they go and how you're going to interact with them and all the while there's also going to be this Moriarty type figure that is also attempting to gather certain things. He's your arch rival and in certain scenarios you're actually going to need to go against them and attempt to drop a box on them. If you can do that while obtaining whatever objective you need you will win the game. Each campaign scenario is about 15 minutes. Each separate individual floor, which is going to contain different items, so it has this legacy based content, it's going to be about 45 minutes or so. And there's, I believe, five or even six different floors, at least as far as what I have. This is a prototype, so it will change as the game goes on. But regardless, that's pretty much the idea of the game. We'll go ahead and take you down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, and then we'll come up and discuss my review of Relics of Rajavahar. Welcome, you are adventurer and thrill seeker Virginia Rivers. You've discovered the ancient temple of Rajivahara, known for its legendary treasures. And of course, if you find them, you'll take them to the museum where they're properly cared for and not even think about keeping them for yourself. However, there is an arch nemesis or a villain in the game that is going to attempt to do his own uh, dastardly deeds attempting to gather these gems to unfold the end of the world. As you can see in this prototype, which is subject to change, we have five different floors of different things you're going to be getting the game as well as this hidden mystery one here there's the main board there's the two different meeples you'll be utilizing you and your arch nemesis the gems the deck of cards for the first floor and these are crates crates you'll be utilizing in the game go ahead and set all these aside and begin the game by simply setting this in front of you and flipping over the first card the first card is going to indicate what references you'll need and in this case for the first simple floor of the dungeon you're only going to be using these crates here and these crates can be pushed and they can be dropped and you can climb on top of them. So go ahead and keep that reference aside so you can see it and know what they do and take the next card here and that is going to be your setup for the first floor. Floor 1-1. One, one. It's going to tell you where you can go ahead and set the crates, how many you set, where you will go, and where the gem is going to go as well. And in this specific example, you're going to have one crate here. You'll have three crates over here. You're going to have two over here. You'll have two over here. You're going to have two more here and then you're going to have one and one right here and after you've placed it correctly make sure that you're all nice and stacked evenly go ahead and place the gem on top of the space that it says to take your character and place it on the board and if it tells you to place your nemesis go ahead and do that as well as well as potentially the even the other gem and in this case for the first floor of the first dungeon scenario go ahead and just set it up just like this in the game, there are basic rules. You are able to move orthogonally up, down, left, and right. So you can always do stuff like this. However, you cannot move diagonally. So you can't move your character to the side like that. Additionally, when you come across one of these crates here, you are able to push it. And so you can push it just like that. That is going to allow you to potentially get up on top of it because your other move is you can climb up or down a floor. You can't go up two floors. So for instance, I couldn't walk over here and climb up these two, but I can go ahead and climb up one and if there was another floor next to it with two I could climb up that one as well just like you would consider stairs and in this case I've gone ahead and pushed this here and I need to get up on top of here as well another interesting thing you can do in this game is you can move across the board you can push uh, these crates underneath other crates and when you do that that's going to slide out and the one on top or the ones on top will fall just like that and from there we'll go ahead and see what else we can do because we need to get over here and how are we going to do that well I'll go ahead and move over over here and I'll push this one I'll move my character and then I'll go ahead and push it one more time and then I can climb up and when I climb up I can go up onto the second floor here 
I can then drop down to the first floor down here and I can push this crate into this empty space here and it's going to fall directly like that. This one will come down with the gem on it and I can climb up and gather the gem because each scenario has a goal and the goal is going to be stated at the bottom left hand corner of every single one of these cards, whether it's getting one gem or two gems or defeating your nemesis or some other unique aspect that will come in later floors potentially. But regardless, after I've done that, I've completed my objective for the round. I can go ahead and then take this off the board as well as all of the different little crates here and then I can go ahead and move on to the next floor. I'll take the next one here, I'll flip it over and then I'm going to go ahead and set it up. I'll go ahead and place my character where it says to place it. I'll go ahead and place my two slots where it says to place them right here as well as finish setting this up here and I'm still doing the same thing. The objective for this scenario is I need to go ahead and gather the gem and where is the gem going to be located? Well it says so on the card. It says right here in the middle. So the topmost portion of this stack and now the game once again has begun. I'll go ahead and move my character around the board. I'll go ahead and climb it up this thing here. I'll then go ahead and push this brick down. It will fall into this space here, right, where there's an empty area because you can't push a brick uh, when another brick is, is there. And then easy peasy, I can just jump up and gather that gem. And that's going to allow me to collect this gem, which is going to be the goal of this scenario. And once again, I'll progress the board. I'll move this these things off. I'll then go ahead and continue to the next scenario and the next one, and the next one. As of course, these do get more challenging. And eventually you're gonna come across the 10th floor. And when you do that, you're going to have to fight the arch nemesis. And I'll just go ahead and show you the example for this one and we'll finish it up here. But this is your arch nemesis. He's gonna be three blocks away from you. And and then there's going to be stacks of two bricks all around him. And your objective is to make a brick fall on top of him. So let's go ahead and see if we can try and figure this out. I'll move my character around here. Hmm. I'll go all the way around. I'll drop this one off. This will fall. This will fall down. I'll go ahead and push this and I'll move this all the way over here. And let's see. I'll jump up here. I'll knock this one down as well because we need to get at least one brick in the center here so we can get one of these guys up on top. And let's see, I'll go ahead and move this down. I'll jump down, I'll move around here. Doodla doodla doodla, and I'll come back around this way. And I'll drop this, I'll push this and this will fall down. And then I'm gonna push this brick over. See if I can figure this out. I'll go ahead and jump up. I'll push this over to one side. And I still need to get, be able to push this guy over on top of this guy. So I'll jump down here. I'll push this brick over, jump over on this level, jump over here, push this brick, jump up and knock this into my opponent. And when you smush your opponent, that is the objective or goal of this specific round. You're going to then move on. And what do you do to move on on the 10th floor? Well, you'll take everything off and then you're gonna go ahead and set this deck aside after seeing what new challenge awaits you in the next floor. And you're going to open up the next floor's set of blocks and cards. And in this case, we're gonna have these guys here as well as we're going to have 10 more new floors. And so now we've got these things here and these are called boulders. And boulders function differently comparatively to crates. So boulders, and it'll tell you on the next card here, you flip over this one here and it has now crates and boulders. Boulders cannot be pushed, but they can fall. So in an example, if you had something that looked like this, you could simply have your character push this, these would then fall. And then you can come around here, you could push this and then the boulder would fall. And of course you could push your little crates here, but you cannot push the boulders. They are not movable. They are too heavy, so you cannot get them across. You'll then, after you understand the rules of that specific type of block, you're then gonna move on to the first floor. You'll set this up just like you would in the first floor and attempt to gather the gem or gems based on what it says you need to do in the goal area and progress to the point where you're then going to have to fight your arch nemesis on floor 10 here and doing the same thing, dropping a crate on top of him. Then you'll progress to the next scenario with a new block, which I won't go ahead and reveal exactly, but I will show you what type of block it is. And it is going to be these little ice blocks here, which will change the game dramatically and basically change how you're going to be pushing blocks along. You could probably imagine in the comments, let me know what you think these guys do, what the blocks of ice are going to utilize and how they were going to work. After you get through all of the floors and beat all of the nemesis, depending on what the Kickstarter comes with, you're going to finish the game. So it has a little bit of a legacy style, which enacts new and interesting blocks every single time you upgrade a floor. And of course, new and interesting ways to deal with your nemesis as you attempt to gather all of the relics of Rajihara. So basically that is the game. Let's come up and discuss what I think about it and whether or not you guys want to pick this game up or not for yourselves on Kickstarter.
Relics of Rajavihara. And hopefully I pronounced it once right, at least throughout this whole video, but I'm not great at pronouncing things, so you'll have to forgive me if I didn't do so. Regardless, let's talk about the game. Well, it reminds me of two separate things. A, it reminds me of the 8-bit style Nintendo games that you play as a character that basically moves around like this uh, in a side-scroller and p pushes and pulls blocks. There's a lot of games that simulate or sim simulate this style of game, but this one is directly related to a board. But regardless, you're still moving, pulling, and pushing, and climbing, and attempting to gather certain gems, which are objectives that let you go from level 1, to 2, to 3, to 4. You'll hit that 10, you'll get to fight the boss, you'll jump onto the next floor of difficulty, you'll entertain a new style of fight, or basically a new style of brick, and that will change how you view the board. Now, the board doesn't really change as far as the length, and it doesn't change the character you're playing or the rules, but the way the bricks interact with your little character will, in fact, change how you want to pull and push and do certain things to interact with the game board and of course every time you solve the puzzle you get a feeling of delight you feel like you've accomplished something and moving on is also kind of cool the legacy aspect in this game speaking of which is similar to a phone game in its nature you're attempting to kind of solve the puzzles and push on throughout this can play as a cooperative game as well in fact that's probably how i'd prefer to play it even though it's supposed to be a single player experience i'd rather have me and my wife there sitting together looking at the puzzles and entertaining the thoughts as to how the character moves uh now that brings up something interesting as well in the mix is the character itself moving it around helps you kind of remember the rules of how the game functions but I don't actually believe you need the character that little character that you move around on the board is not actually needed to be there provided you don't mess up on following the rules as to how you can push and pull and what things you can take from and I think as you progress throughout the game and the better you get at it the less you're actually going to need it unless there's something new that comes in the game at some floor that I haven't seen but regardless in general as long as you understand that my character is here and I can move it here without it actually being there as a visual representation great but if you need that that's also nice as well and in fact in a lot of cases when it gets more complex it's nice to have that character to move around to feel like you're actually a dungeon hopper or a lower or Croft, or one of the, the guy, the guy from Uncharted, Nathan Drake, I suppose. But regardless, uh, the game is a lot of fun. I enjoy games like this. Puzzle games are fun for me, even though I'm not so great at them. But this one is actually different than a lot of the puzzle games I'm used to. This is a game that brings app-based games that I generally would play as, my, as a kid, and even now, into the mix of board gaming, which is something I'm definitely more interested in, especially because I'm very good at this type of game. Uh, but regardless, playing as the cooperative experience I'm going to have a lot more fun and I think having some ways to interact with multiple players in a game like this would be kind of cool and neat and I think you could do a lot of variations as to how you'd like to play maybe you can each take a move to try and get a gem if there's multiple gems on the board or if you fail then your spouse or partner or whatever can go ahead and attempt to take the next turn and attempt to solve the puzzle and you can do some type of scoring or calculations I'm sure there's plenty of ways to do that I really really like this game that that being said that uh, that being said the note is on the opposite end I can see people not enjoying this game because the question comes up well why wouldn't I rather just play a game like this on the tablet or why wouldn't I rather play this game on the classic Nintendo there's games that are similar to it and have the same feel but interact in a more virtual way and my answer to that is well I don't know. You would probably want to play the video game, I suppose, if you like video games more. If you want a handheld experience where you're moving around and interacting with the legacy components as opposed to just sitting there playing on your tablet, this is something I would suggest you take a look at. However, if you probably prefer the more virtual method because it's going to have a lot more levels, it's going to be, you know, other than the fact that it probably has some pay to win content where you're buying and whatnot, at least as of today's new standards, then that's probably something you'll want to take a look at instead. But regardless, I really do have a lot of fun with this. I like moving pieces around with my hands and putting pieces on the board. Some people might feel that is mechanical or even too um, mechanical because you're placing everything down and trying to set up every single board. And some get levels are like instantly finished and completed and understood and other levels take quite a while and you can fail quite a few times as you go throughout the game. But overall, it's up to you. Do you enjoy a game like this? I'm actually curious what you guys think. Would you rather play this game or either or, depending on if you're playing on the tablet or not? Uh, would you like to play it as a cooperative experience? And also, what do you prefer? Video games? style or the, or the digital style of a game like this or would you actually prefer playing it on a board and in fact a lot of solo games I have that question of why wouldn't I rather play this as a video game and it's always a very interesting debate that me and Grant usually have when it comes to playing games like these anyway that's pretty much all I have to say about this game let me know what you think thanks for watching outro
thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game relics of Raja Vihara. And if you're interested, go ahead and look down below where you can find a link to pick up the game to allow you to find legendary treasures that await you inside of the of the, the caves. And also avoid your arch nemesis, which is also a really interesting co concept um, and changes the game a bit. But I'll let you discover that all for yourself. Uh, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We do giveaways. We have one for Dragon Lords Battle of Darien right now, which had a Kickstarter that may or may not still be going on for an expansion. You still have a couple more days left to check that out. As well as go ahead and check our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 or 6.30 p.m. PST. We downgraded an hour. And if you want, we're also on Patreon, and Patreon includes a Discord as well as a general group member Discord where we play games online. We have a community that's growing. I think we have like 20, 25 people, and we want you to participate as well. I'll be sharing games that come in early, so we're getting some interesting new, new little glimpses and pieces that I'm allowed to share with you guys before anybody else, just on my uh, on my Discord as well as for Patreon when you add that in, you'll get to see some other interesting content and content that we're working on personally, like Moonshell, a mermaid game, which is something we're producing from Unfiltered Games. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to finding all the relics in the caves without dying by pushing the bricks with you next time.